Como. My name is Pastor Rick Lees, and I'm excited to present a new series being sponsored by Emmanuel Lutheran Church and Emmanuel Academies. And this series is going to focus in on the relationship between faith and work. And we're entitling it Work Matters. Work Matters with Pastor Will. You know, the conversation and our interest in connecting faith and work is always a key topic, but especially now as we have the challenge of the COVID-19 season. We're all trying to make those connections, and in fact, some of us are struggling even with unemployment. So we believe this conversation comes at a critical time. Pastor Will is going to guide us in this conversation, again, connecting faith and work, and we'll be focusing in on some Bible studies that were offered here at Emmanuel Lutheran by Professor Rolf Jacobson from Luther Seminary. In his first session, he takes a look at the relationship between creation and call. And in his second session, he talks about the Reformation and that there we discovered that everyone had a call. So to guide us again into some critical insights from these offerings and presentations by Rolf Jacobson, we invite Will, to Pastor Will, to invite us into that conversation. Pastor Will? Thank you, Pastor Rick. Hello, everyone. I'm Will Kittinger, one of the pastors here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Naples, and welcome to Work Matters. This is the second part in a two-part series brought to you uh, by Dr. Ralph Jacobson uh, from Luther Seminary in Minneapolis, Minnesota, talking about the relationship between creation and vocation. And in this second part, Dr. Jacobson gets specific and talks about our callings as human beings, how we are all called through our baptisms by God into God's work of uh, reconciling and restoring all of creation. And we have actually been given multiple callings by God uh, through the Holy Spirit. Everyone is called, not just holy people, and did you know that's how it was in Luther's day? Be sure to listen to that part from Dr. Jacobson, how uh, Luther says that only the priest, the monk, and the nun have a vocation. Well, you've always had a vocation, whether it be a son or a daughter, a sibling, a spouse, a parent. Those are the ones just in the household, let alone out in the world. Um, so pay attention. Also pay attention to the uh, particular quotes uh, Dr. Jacobson gives about uh, Luther and how uh, we are freed in a sense and how God just loves the work that we do, the everyday mundane tasks, because those are actually holy. So pay attention, check out the clip, and we'll discuss it afterwards. Check it out. Your series is, uh, uh, what? Faith, vocation, and economics this winter. And I'm here to talk about vocation and the Lutheran doctrine of vocation. And here it is. Here's the simple takeaway, all right? Simple takeaway is in baptism, God calls everyone. All right? You are called. You have multiple callings bestowed on you by the Holy Spirit. Now, the very first time I was teaching prophets course at Luther Seminary, <laughs> seminary that, was, that, that was actually not a joke. That was a mystic. Uh, prophets, we joke about that. But, so the first session of prophets class, you teach the call story. Right? The call of Isaiah, who will go for us? The call of Jeremiah, I'm too young. The call of Moses, I don't, I don't talk too good. right? And then I, I assigned the students to go home and write your call story. And um, you were talking, Steve was talking about like one of his uh, seminary classmates whose call story was, it was the middle of the night and out of the radio, God's voice spoke to me, I should go to the ministry, and the radio was unplugged. Right? <laughs> and that uh, doesn't happen to most of us that way. That wasn't me, that was a yeah. guy. And, uh, but so my student, Martha Hansen, I wrote the best call story I've ever had, I actually still have it, saved it. She said... Um, in the first year of Jimmy Carter, President of the United States, the Lord called me and said, 
I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That was her call. And that's right. That's the correct understanding. So that's the that's the overall takeaway. You were called. Let me take you a few years ahead. Well, um, and Luther says this. How is it possible? This is from Luther. How is it possible that you are not called? You are always in some sort of position. The German word there might be office, right? Role. You've always been a husband or a wife or a son or a daughter or a servant, right? These, these are our callings. We all have multiple callings. And then Luther says this. Imagine the lowest position. No, I can't believe it. A husband. <laughs> do you not have enough to do to watch over your spouse, children, workers, and property so that all might be uh, obedient to God and no harm might come to them? So all of us are called. Part, I mean, part of the point is everybody's called, not just holy people. So let, let me, that's the next piece of the talk. So Martin Luther came around, right? Martin Luther, 1517, 95 theses, right? In Luther's era, the, the universe was understood, and this comes from an early church father, as three story. Up here is God. And this is the holy, that's holiness. And down here is um, regular people. I'm just going to put people. And this is the profane, or the unholy. And there's a gap between them. And in order to reach this state, God has holy orders. They're, they were called the holy orders. Places where people are called, but only they are called. Only they have a calling from God. And they were their point was to bridge. And this was priest, monk, and nun. And so when Luther in 1505 tells his dad, I'm not going to law school, I'm going to become a monk, his dad wasn't happy. And his, but he said, my job is to do holy work, to pray seven times a day. They had worship service in the monastery starting at 2 a.m. And went around the clock and to, to uh, be in lives of contemplation and prayer. And not only, therefore, did they earn their own salvation, but their excess holiness went into something called the treasury of merit. Uh, the Catholic Church teaches this. And uh, to this day, it's in the catechism of the Catholic Church. And uh, so by, he said to his dad, I'm going to a higher thing. I'm going to live this life of holiness to save myself and also you. Right? <clears throat> And Luther discovered, so the important thing is to note that in Luther's day, only the clergy, priest, monk, and nun, had a vocation. And if you talk to old school Catholic uh, priests today, they'll say that. They'll talk that way. I have a vocation. I, was, uh, I went to a Catholic college and uh, loved, uh, loved my time and people there. Um, I had just graduated from seminary in 1991, and one of my one of my uh, buddies was getting married. So another buddy who got married earlier flew back from California for the wedding, and in one of those beautiful summer nights in August, uh, which um, we have in Minnesota, uh, Mark and I stayed up on uh, the shore of Lake Calhoun and talked all night till the sun came up. Right? You can do that when you're 26. <laughs> and uh, at the end of the night, Mark said to me. Um, what, what's next for me? You graduated from seminary. And I said, uh, well, I'm waiting for a call. And when I get a call, I'll go to a congregation. And in pastor talk, a call means... It, do, it doesn't mean anything holy. A call is a job. But my friend Mark said this. He goes, wow, you have a calling. He's Catholic, remember. I wish I had a calling. Now, what Mark did, I wasn't smart enough to read Luther back to him. We've been up all night. <laughs> How is it possible that you are not called, Luther says. You've always had some sort of position. I should have said, calling? You're called, Mark. You're married to Sandy. That's a calling. His job at the time 
was to do bond issues for school districts in California. So, like, the schools get paid twice a year, right? You pay your tax, your property taxes twice a year, and then that money, some of it goes to the school district. So they get paid twice a year. In between, they run out of money, or they're growing and they got to build a school. How do they get funded in between those two payments? Well, they need somebody like Mark to set up a bond issue that then is sold, and people like you buy the bonds, right? And I should have said, Mark, what you do is a calling because you contribute to the education of boys and girls. Without you doing your job, someone like you, you that is that is just as holy of calling as what Steve and I do. But I, I wasn't smart enough to say that in those days. Um, so I just went, oh. I failed him. But I talked to him since, and I've since uh, explained it. But uh, so that, right, to help him understand. What Luther came along and did and realized what the Bible says, it doesn't work this way. Salvation is a gift. And what salvation is a gift? Now, what is my work? If I don't have to go into a holy order to save myself and others, why then, every job, every role is a calling. I've already talked about being a family member is a calling. Luther says this about family life. Uh, Luther didn't like pure human reason. So he says... Um, now, if you observe life just from natural reason, and you look at married life, mar uh, reason turns up her nose and says, Alas, must I rock the baby, wash its diapers, make its bed, smell its stench, stay up nights with it, and on top of that, care for my wife and provide for her, labor at my trade, and take care of this and of that and provide. Must I make a prisoner of myself? That's what Luther says reason looks at life. He says, but Christian faith opens its eyes, and it looks upon all these insignificant, distasteful, even despised duties, and looks at them in the spirit, and is aware that all are, are adorned with divine approval, as with the costliest gold and jewels. And Christian faith says, God, because I am certain that you have created me and you've given my body, I also know that for certainty that they meet with holy perfection, and I am not worthy to rock the little babe or wash its diapers. But oh, how gladly I will do so. So Luther, who was the most famous man in Europe in his century, he wrote... Half of the publications that were published in his lifetime and sold. I mean, think about that. Half of, in all of Europe. He had six kids. When his wife's sister died, they adopted her four kids. And they took in four other orphans. So Luther, while he's the most famous man in Europe, is raising 14 kids. And doing all this stuff in addition. And he said, in Christian faith... I'm not worthy to do this, but doing it, God looks at it as adorned with gold and jewels, right? So vocation is to do the earthly things that we're called to do. Because we've been freed in Christ, we don't have to, Luther says, go on. He says, um, I guarantee you, if you realized you had all this work that God values, you wouldn't be thinking about making some pilgrimage or doing some saintly work, right? He said that the normal work we do is saintly and is holy. So my friend Mark uh, did a holy work for all those years that he worked for Piper Jaffrey and issued bonds for schools. So we were talking, how do you know what your gifts are? Because part of them, um, part of it, some of the roles we are just bestowed with. I didn't choose to be born into a family with two older sisters, but my first vocation then was to be both a brother and a son. And then I had a little brother, so then I was an older brother. Those are different vocations, being a, trust me, being a little brother and an older brother. Very different, right? But then being a son, now, now I have aging parents, 
And uh, taking care of aging parents is itself a vocation, right? And I see so many people my age and a little older doing that vocation, taking care of their aging parents. Um, let me stop there for uh, comments or questions. I've got nine minutes. <laughs> three children, four and under, and trying to, to keep them happy and quiet in the church service. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I commented afterwards that I didn't even pay any attention to the sermon. And some wise friend of mine said, well, Mark, you're doing God's work just taking care of your yeah, kids. Yes. And as you get older, then you will have the time that you can pay attention to the sermon. Yeah. I want you to know that sometimes the Protestant church has incorrectly taught that God values your time when you're volunteering at church more than God values your time the rest of the week. It's not true. Right? We still need you to volunteer. <laughs> I, um, in teaching about vocation, um, I can't remember, uh, I'm old enough, I can't remember if I talked to this woman or a, a pastor recorded, but there had been a woman who had been a neonatal nurse. And then she retired, and in retirement, she was knitting prayer, prayer shawls for her congregation. Right, so that when someone's sick, then somebody from the care team brings them a prayer shawl, right? And knitting prayer shawls for the church, she said, I'm pleased that I'm finally doing something for God. This was a neonatal nurse. My son had his first surgery when he was four weeks old. And neonatal nurse, nurses took care of him. He almost died. Uh, praise God, he's uh, through the miracles of medicine, he's alive. And uh, is uh, angry most days because he's 15. <laughs> That's one of my friends says, my kid is angry and there's no reason for it. Right? Uh, and I'm happy about that. But so what we need to do is help people understand that's a holy role. Being a bond broker is a holy role. Being a sister, a son, being a citizen is a holy role. Being a neighbor to your neighbors. All of us are called by God through the Holy Spirit in many ways. And living out our Christian calling as God's hands and feet and heart in daily life is part of that. A friend of mine who teaches at Fuller Seminary, uh, which is uh, in California, uh, said, part of our job is to understand, help people understand that all of the people you work with, all of the people you live near, are people that God has entrusted to you for Christian care. My wife does this. My wife also, my wife um, works in finance. Uh, she uh, just, uh, she's worked for Wells Fargo for a long time in finance. And one of the things she does is she takes care um, in a secular environment with Christian care of people going through crisis. So she recently had um, one of her uh, the people that reports to her needed to go to court um, to block uh, an issue with child care, right? And so um, she said, I need this day off to go to court. And so my wife took the day off and went to court with her. Right? Because that's what Christians do. And so my wife's vocation is not just, my wife's first vocation is she um, manages retirement plans. So if you have a retirement plan, right, that money, it, uh, your company puts it in the market, but they do it by giving it to an intermediary first. And my wife works for those intermediaries that handle all those billions of dollars. So her first job is to make sure that all of the retirement accounts that she oversees are accurate to the penny, you know? So she's good at that. But then her second job is to regard everybody around her as someone that God has entrusted to her care. I think I have one more story. I got a hundred stories. It's all I do, actually. Just tell random stories. So Luther said this about being a citizen. To, uh, if you see there is a lack of hangmen or beetles, a beetle's a janitor, 
So my grandpa was a janitor. He was the high school janitor in Montevideo. <laughs> Judges or lord or princess. <laughs> so Luther says, if you look out there and you see there's a lack of uh, hangmen, janitors, judges, lords, or princes, and you find that you're qualified, this is a little bit of a joke, you're qualified to be a prince, <laughs> you should offer your services and apply for the position so that necessary government may, may occur. So we are also called as citizens. You're called to inform yourself and to vote, right? You're called to maybe serve on the city council, school board, volunteer for the basketball team, right? I'm constantly getting uh, emails from the school. We need somebody to help with concessions. We need somebody to sell tickets. You know, we need somebody to help with the fundraiser or Chick-fil-A, you know, constant things. This is all part of our calling, that you should regard your whole life as work that God values, not just holy people in lives of contemplation. All right, I'll take questions. Or rebuttals. I'm taking rebuttals, too. All right, here's my last point, then. Sometimes... In order to regard our vocations, we have to rethink what Roman Catholics call the good. So, for instance, in the perfect vocation, you love what you do, you get paid a living wage, and it contributes to society. All of it's perfect, right? You love what you do, you get paid, and it contributes. And you can call that a life of fulfillment. That's the ideal in vocation. Here's the downside of the Christian, the Lutheran doctrine of vocation. What if you love what you do, but the world changes and those jobs disappear? What if you love being a saddle maker, and then they invent the car? Right? Uh, and I know a lot of people that have loved their jobs, and their jobs have gone away. Or maybe you go into something, you love what you do, but after a while, you don't love it anymore, but you're stuck there. What you, I, I, um, I had a cousin, I still have a cousin, who um, he used to run the city storm sewers for a big city. That was his job, right? To go underground every day and make sure that the storms are... Now, that's vocation, right? Because if you don't have sanitation, disease is everywhere, right? But I said to him, you know... Uh, you don't want, why don't you move? He says, no, I'm stuck in a job. <laughs> because the pension system, you have to work so many years, right? Yeah. At a certain point, he said, I'm stuck in this job. And I've known a lot of people like that over the years, too. People that tell me I feel stuck. I had a parole officer, excuse me, let me rephrase that. <laughs> <laughs> a member of my church was a parole officer. And we used to go fishing together. And he was stuck in his job at a certain point. He had to work so many years, until so an age, right, until his age and the years of service reached a certain number and he could retire. So then what you have to do is change it. You have to say, well, maybe I'm not fulfilled in my job, but the first thing is, I'm still making a living for a family I love. And I can, regard, I can come to regard the people around me as people I serve and love. And finally, I can look at the outcome of my job, right? Whether, you're, whether you are the storm sewer guy, or the parole officer, or the teacher, right, who's burned out, or the seminary teacher maybe who's burned out, you, you can rethink the good. The good changes, and you reimagine it, and um, there can be then a, still a sense of positive vocation, even when things, uh, even when the underside of this doctrine um, gets exposed. Thank you, Dr. Jacobson. In baptism, we are all called. We all have a calling given to us by God through the power of the Holy Spirit. Not just so-called holy people. Everyone is holy because of the call that they have from God. And so, as we move forward, we take this with us uh, out into the world. 
that we're not just here to serve ourselves, but we're here to serve God and others through our call. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Uh, please, if you'd like to continue this conversation about your call in baptism, uh, reach out to me at pastorwill at naplesemmanuel.org. That is my email address. You can also uh, like us on Facebook. We have two pages, facebook.com slash naplesemmanuel or facebook.com slash emmanuelcommunitypark. That is the uh, new uh, mission development for Emmanuel Lutheran Church out on Oilwell Road here in Collier County. Um, both excellent ways to get in touch with us so that we can continue this conversation about faith and work and how they interplay together and how that, that the connection between the two can make your life better. Thank you so much for watching. Work Matters with me, Pastor Will. Take care.